Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah, ve ma vala, amma ba'd. Fakala Sheikh Ibn Baz, in Durusul Muhimma, we are now on page 66. Uh, we're still explaining the types of love. So, there's three types of love. There's natural love. نعم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أما بعد ف last time we spoke about the conditions of لا إله إلا الله شروط لا إله إلا الله and we have mentioned that Al-Hakami fi manzumat Sulam Al-Wasool he said wa bi shurutin sab'atin qad quyyidat wa fi nusus al-wahy haqqan waradat fa innahu lam yantafi' qailuha bin nutq illa haythu yastakmiluha al-ilm wal yaqin wal qabul wal inqiyad fadri ma aqulu wal sidq wal ikhlas wal mahabbah وفقك الله لما أحبه. so the sheikh رحمه الله تعالى he said with seven conditions it is uh, specified and it has come in the text of the revelation for verily a person does not benefit from just saying it however uh, until he complete until he completes it and then he mentions the seven العلم واليقين والقبول knowledge certainty acceptance والانقياد فدر ما أقول conformity or following and then he says فدر ما أقول this is يعني he is out of poetry for the need of poetry most people do the same thing even in the poetry of النحو for example you have النحو you have, for example, Mulhat al-I'rab, and you have the Alfiya, and so on. So ba basically, poets, they always add certain things in order for to beautify the poem. And then he said, وَالصِّدْقُ وَالْإِخْلَاصُ وَالْمَحَبَّةِ Honesty, sincerity, and love. وَفَّقَكَ اللَّهُ لِمَا أَحَبَّهِ And then he said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you to that which he loves. هَذَا خُلُقٌ عَظِيمٌ this is great manners from these ulama. And this is the way of the Salaf. That they make dua, they supplicate to the people who are reading their books. And this shows you the mercy of these ulama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. And, this, and that is why it is our duty towards them to make dua for them as well. Now, our uh, dear brother who was reading, he said that Imam bin Baz said, no, Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala did not say. <clears throat> so we are reading the book of Imam ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, which is a durus al muhimma However, we are reading the explanation of Shaykh Haytham Sarhan. Shaykh mm -hmm. Haytham Sarhan hafidhahullah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And the one who is explaining the types of, of love, mahabba, is Shaykh Haytham Sarhan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala. Um, so there are three types of love um, natural love, where it is permissible as long as it is not given priority to the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Example loving one's children and wife. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than their children, parents, and the rest of, of the people. Um, then, uh, on the other side, loving, or, uh, loving other than Allah, that is major disbelief. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, still there are some who take other, others as Allah's equal. They love them as they should love Allah. Surah Baqarah, Ayah 165. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, how, how does this mean? I love my wife. Is this shirk? No, no. I love my mother. Is this shirk? No, no. Then what is this love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look, brothers, 
<clears throat> any type of ibadah, any type of ibadah, if you dedicate it to any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is major shirk. What does major shirk mean? Meaning it gets you outside the fold of Islam. Any type of ibadah. And loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ibadah. And the love that is meant here, the love which is from a creation to his creator. And there are people that love, I don't know, this wali or this sayyid or uh, some of the sahaba or so as they love, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is kufr. This is kufr, brothers. Even if it was uh, some pious people or the companions of the Prophet sallallahu and so on. Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be only given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we said, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a creation to his creator. And you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as creation to, to his creator. So if somebody, for example, fears someone as he fears Allah, yani he thinks, for example, he says, if I don't go to his grave, then he will harm me. So he's fearful. This fear should only be dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nobody is able to harm you in that way. Any creation is able to punish you in that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can punish you for disobedience to him. So this is kufr that gets you outside the fold of Islam. And these actions are the actions of the heart. These are ibadat, acts of worship of the heart. Qalbiyyah. Ibadatun qalbi al mahabbatu wal khawfu wal raja'u wal tawakkulu and so on. So love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope. Uh, 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 all of these, what is meant by them is that which is dedicated from creation to the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And then there is the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is obligatory. Rather, it is from the most important parts of Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who are with him are firm with the disbelievers and merciful with one another. Surah 48, ayah 29. It is specific to the following so four. Take their example. So we should take their example with the uh, between the Muslims, we should take the example of the Sahaba. What are they? Ruhama'u baynahum. Ruhama'u baynahum. So there is mercy between them. They act towards each other with mercy. So ya ikhwa, we see this a lot. Well, unfortunately, we see the Muslims doing this. We see uh, once a Muslim, for example, goes, uh, if he was in a room and then he leaves the room, people start making riba of him, backbiting him. He is so and so and so and so. Subhanallah. <clears throat> These are not the manners of Muslims. The same thing is with how we deal with our fellow Muslims. So if we take our example, if we take this, so today, for example, today, we heard this ayah and we have done, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, we have done, we have transgressed so much in this regards, let's make this ayah a reminder for us. Think about this. Think about this now. Think about it. Say, look, we are ordered to follow the Sahaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as ruhama'u baynahum. That they are merciful between each other. Then why shouldn't we take their example? Why are we mean to one another? Why are we not? Merciful, uh, uh, why are we not? Uh, 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 merciful is used in English, but I would rather uh, uh, not use it. So I will take it back because uh, 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 that is dedicated only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in Arabic. So let's say, why, uh, why don't we treat one another with mercy and remind ourselves with this ayah? So let this be a reminder for all of us. I remind myself before you, that when we deal with our fellow Muslims, that we remember this ayah and we say, what am I doing? What am I doing? Even if you were the only one, even if you are the only one and there are 20 people in front of you and they don't do this, you should be that one who remembers 
this ayah and takes uh, uh, and follows the exam and follows the example of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions radiyallahu anhum wa ardahum. Naam. So the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala is specific to the following four uh, places beloved to Allah subhanahu wa taala, such as Mecca and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Medina. Uh, times beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as the night of Qadr and the third party part of every night. The doer of these actions, such as the prophets, angels, companions, and every believer. And the actions which Allah every, loves. And the Shaykh said, Wa kulli muwahidin, and every person who makes tawheed. Naam. And the last one, the actions which Allah loves. Everything legislated by him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as Tawheed. So then the question is asked, what is the meaning of the phrase slave in the testimony? Muhammad is the Muhammad so sallallahu say, ab, say abd better than saying right. slave. Say it in Arabic. No. Uh, what is the meaning of the phrase abd in the testimony? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the abd. And Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best worshipper of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He has perfected his worship to Allah alone, and He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should not be worshipped since he does not have any share in the lordship, worship, nor the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Naam, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not worthy of worship. He's not worthy. None. None of the creation is worthy of worship. The only one who's worthy of worship is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the meaning of the word? Huh? Not the phrase. What is the meaning of the word abd or abduhu in the phrase or in the shahada? <clears throat> Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. <clears throat> abduhu wa rasooluh ay la yu'bad. لِأَنَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَيْسَ لَهُ شَيْءٌ مِنْ خَصَائِصِ الرُّبُوبِيَّةِ وَلَا الْأُلُوهِيَّةِ وَلَا الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالصِّفَاتِ So when you say Abd, you are saying that he's a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> then it follows that somebody who worships should not be worshipped. This is what Shaykh Haytham Sarhan is saying. Also, he's saying that he does not have anything from the Rububiyyah or the Uluhiyyah or the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning he has uh, 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 nothing of the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor uh, uh, al Uluhiyyah, the actions of the creation and worshiping their creator and also the names and attributes the, uh, which are perfect uh, 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 to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> and then he says الخلقي, that he is the he has achieved the highest level of worship for he has accomplished that level to Allah or attained that level of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if anybody comes and asks you it says what does it mean what does it mean, Abduhu wa Rasulullah, Muhammad Abdu wa Rasulullah? You say this answer that we have said, or in another class, we said what? We said what Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab said, Abdun la yu'bad wa Rasulun la yukadhab, that he is a abd, a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who should not be worshipped, and he's a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should, he shouldn't be, uh, 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 meaning he shouldn't be disbelieved. He should be believed. That's what it means. Because he's carrying messenger, meaning he's carrying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should, meaning that you shouldn't disbelieve in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor the messenger which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. Naam. Um, then uh, Shaykh Sarhan Hafizullah talks about the various types of servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, um, servitude, al-ubudiyyah, al-ubudiyyah. So we have types of ubudiyyah. Servitude, they mean ubudiyyah, like the, uh, 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 because ubudiyyah, brothers, is very problematic when it is translated into English. 
because there are ibad for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are not worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this word is very problematic. Ibad in this sense, for example, the, the disbelievers, they are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this context, we say these ibad are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they are Muslims or, uh, or non-Muslims. And you have a special ubudiyah, which is the ones who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? The believers, the Muslims, they are ibad, but this is a specific meaning, a more specific meaning than the general ubudiyah, meaning creation. <laughs> <clears throat> because all of us are creatures for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created us, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. So this is the general ubudiyya. Learn these terms. Learn these terms. Because you will hear them from the ulama. And write this down. If you're not writing, you're making a mistake. لِأَنَّ الْفَوَائِدَ شَوَارِدٌ And as, as Sheikh bin Uthaymin says, that benefits, they go away. So <clears throat> we have general ubudiyya. Now we know what abd is. We said abd is worshipper. Now we have general ubudiyya, meaning creation. For those who are writing, I'm repeating. Meaning creation, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. They are all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Lord, their creator. Uh, uh, this is a fact that no one could ever escape. And then we have a special kind of ubudiyya, which is the ubudiyya of the believers, the Muslims and the uh, 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 the people who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we have uh, an even more special ubudiyya which is the ubudiyya of the messengers uh, 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 and the, the angels and so on anyway let's read what the shaykh has mentioned about this Naam. so the <clears throat> general ubudiyya is it is the coerc coercive uh, well, we said slavery so I'll say ubudiyya it is for all creation no, he said coercive. He said coercive. Al Qahr. No, there, there is a uh, our brother Zander. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, reward him. Our brother Zander. He said, Al Qahr. There is a better a translation for this. Al Qahr wal Qadr uh, is what. يعني علو القدر وعلو القهر. And here we have عبودية القهر, meaning uh, uh, the عبودية of dominion and supremacy. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means. Naam. So is it better if I say the dominating Ubudiya? Naam. Or Ubudiya of dominion or, or and so on. Or so the supremacy. Ubudiya of supremacy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The supremacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. It is <clears throat> for all creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is none in the heavens or the earth. But will not return to the to the entirely merciful as a slave. Uh, Surah 19, Ayah 93. Both the believers and disbelievers are included in this. Then there is a more specific type of abudiya, which is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says the true slaves of the entirely merciful are those who walk on the earth humbly. Surah 25, Ayah 63. And this includes everyone who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to his law. And then there is the very specific type of abudiyya, and it is the worship of the messengers, peace be upon them all. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely he was a thankful abd in Surah 17, the third ayah. Their worship is special and none can challenge them regarding worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ayah is in regards to Nuh. This ayah is in regards to Nuh. Naam. Idhan aqsamul ubudiyya aqsamul ubudiyya lillahi azza wa jal aammatun wa khaasatun wa khaasatul khaasah aammatun wa khaasatun wa khaasatul khaasah Naam. So then uh, Shaykh Farhan Hafizullah talks about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His lineage so he's a uh, uh, so he, he is uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim and Hashim is from Quraysh and Quraysh is from the Arabs and the Arabs are from the descendants of Ismail ibn Ibrahim al-Khalil meaning the beloved upon him and our prophet the best of praise and peace 
his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's birth. He was born in the year of the elephant in Mecca in Rabi' al-Awwal. He lived 63 years from them, 40 years prior to becoming a prophet and 23 years out, uh, a prophet and a messenger. He was an orphan. His father died before his birth and his mother died while he was very young. And his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took care of him. After his grandfather passed away, his uncle, Abu Talib, raised him. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sent to the people and the jinn. Whoever hears of his message and does not accept it is a disbeliever. His message, uh, he invited to worship Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala. No? The Sheikh said in Arabic, he said, uh, he is a disbeliever, major disbelief, whosoever he may be. Kafirun, kufran, akbaran, kainan man kaan. So this is major kufr that gets you outside the milla of Islam. Naam. Um, his message is that uh, he invited to worship Allah alone, good manners and good things. Naam. Da'a ila tawheed. Da'a ila tawheed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called to tawheed. That's why you see the people of Sunnah and Jama'ah, they call to Tawheed. And this is the first thing they call for. And this is the most thing that they concentrate on. And this is why you see the people of Bid'ah, they don't call to Tawheed. And they leave it till the last. And they say, no, let's, uh, 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 let's innovate another way of Da'wah, which is based on so and so and so and so. And all of these are Bid'ah. We said last time, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, when he sent Mu'adh to Yemen, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he sent one of the ulama to Yemen to make uh, to call them to Tawheed. He said, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلُ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةَ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So let the first thing that you call them, that you make da'wah, you call them to, be لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And in another hadith, he said, Ibadat Allah, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith, he said, Ila an Allah. And ya ikhwa, I know we have some Arabic speakers here, three or we, uh, يعني, or even maybe more. An huna ya ikhwa, an masdariya, an yuwahidu, an yuwahidu. Yani, ma'naha falyakun. أول أول ما تدعوهم إليه توحيد الله هكذا توحيد أن مصدرية هنا أن يوحد meaning in English what meaning that they make توحيد of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and this composition in Arabic أن يوحد means let the first thing that you call them for be the توحيد of Allah سبحانه وتعالى this is how the composition of the Arabic grammar that is used here that what is used is an al masdariya, meaning that we bring the masdar, meaning that we bring the jirand, the 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 the, uh, the word itself without any additions, no affixes, no no suffixes, no, none of that. So, uh, no prefixes. I mean, no suffixes. So, uh, none of that. So, the tawheed of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, this is a command from the for the Prophet said, "Faliyakun." Let it be. This is a command from the Prophet ﷺ. And that is why Shaykh Sulaiman Rahili, in his explanation, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, in his explanation of the book of Tawheed, he said what means that anybody who deviates from the way of the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ, he exited Tawheed, he exited the Sunnah and entered into bid'ah. And I keep on repeating this because this is very important so that we know. Sometimes you see some people and you say, mashallah, look, they are spreading goodness. We say, fine, ya akhi, but they are contradicting the way of the Prophet Sallallahu They are saying, Tawheed divides people. We don't want Tawheed. We will call to something else. We say, this is not the way of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you know better than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If you say you know better than the Prophet وسلم, it is as if you are it is as if you are saying that you know better than the one who sent him. Because Allah, because the Prophet وسلم, he does not talk out of his whims and desires and so on. No, it is divine revelation. Just like we took in the last uh, uh, lesson that we had in tafsir. 
that he does not speak out of his own will. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ Verily it is a divine revelation that is revealed. Subhanallah. So that is why and the ulama, they say, Every goodness is found in following those, the pious predecessors, those that have treaded the path before us. And every evil is in the innovation of the people that came after them and contradicted them. Because khalaf, means the people that came after them. And also, uh, uh, khalaf is the people that, that came after them in a different way. Yani, uh, 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 they came after them and contradicted them. So that is why all goodness, brothers, is in following the pious predecessors. <clears throat> and before, and as we know, that uh, 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 the Quran and the Sunnah, by the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, on top of the list is, the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, uh, anhum, wa arrahum, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. So let's know this. Huh? Let's know this very carefully. And let's be followers, not innovators. Naam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also warned from worshipping other than Allah, bad manners and evil deeds. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken from Mecca to Baytul Maqdis. Then he went up the seven heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him and the five prayers were made obligatory. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the seventh heaven. Yani all the heavens and, uh, to the seventh. Uh, he had migrated, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had migrated from Mecca to Medina where he also passed away. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried <clears throat> in the house of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha. Radiya? Radiallahu anha. No, I'm uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed the religion with him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has conveyed the clear message, has completed his mission, has advised the people, and has struggled in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every possible way. It is not possible for anyone to introduce in this religion any act of worship. Naam, and we bear witness, wallahi, we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam بَلَّغَ الْبَلَاغَ الْمُبِينَ وَأَدَّ الْأَمَانَةِ وَنَصَحَ الْأُمَّةِ وَجَاهَدَ فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ Naam, we bear witness that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he conveyed the message in the like al balagh al mubin in the uh, uh, the most clear uh, conveyance and that he has delivered uh, uh, the message and that he has admonished the ummah and given advice and that he has made uh, jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most true of jihad sallallahu alayhi wasallam now I have a question for you. What does Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mean? A brother called me from the US and uh, يعني, uh, يعني Allah one of uh, they are two two brothers from Kuwait. And one of them in the United States, they are there to learn, like uh يعني, to study abroad uh, engineering and so on. He says that his friend he became an atheist. I said, Allah al -musta'a. So we started talking and so on. So he brought this shubha. He, and the other, the friend who was talking to me, the Muslim, he's saying, yani, what is this? He said, yani, they said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays on the prayer. And he, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu Akbar, and so on, like this? And make salah, like we make salah? So what does sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mean? When we make salah, we say Allahu Akbar, right? We make takbirat al-ihram. We say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, rahman We make ruku, we make... So what is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? La matbuhan bil ila rasulullah. So Abdul Hakim says it means Allah praises him in the presence of the angels. 
طيب أحسنت نعم absolutely عبد الحكيم this is the meaning so the salah from Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon his creation is mentioning them for the the علماء say what هو ثناؤه أو ذكره عليه في الملأ الأعلى they say that it is the mentioning of uh, 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 the, uh, the abd to the uttermost or highest of angels الأعلى, and they say this is the قول of Abu al in Sahih al-Bukhari and this is what we know so I went back to Sahih al-Bukhari but I didn't find this what I found that uh, uh, the, that Abu al said that it is the mentioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation to the angels in general, like this, Al-Malaika. He didn't say Al-Malaika Al-A'la. I didn't find it. So I was curious. So I asked one of the Mashayikh, one of my Mashayikh, I said, Shaykh, yani, we always hear this, we hear this from Shaykh Sulaiman al Rahili, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin, Shaykh, always, always the ulama. They say, Thana'uhu alayhi fil mala al-A'la. So I said, Shaykh, when I went back to Sahih al-Bukhari, I saw j- angels, the angels, just like Abdul Hakim said, just like Abdul Hakim answered in the chat. So the Sheikh said, okay, they are the generals in, in uh, so they are the angels in general, but included from, when you say the angels, meaning all the angels, then the closest of angels and the Mala al-A'la are included in these, uh, 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 in, uh, 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 with these angels as well. So there is no contradiction there. I said, so, subhanAllah, na'am, you are right, subhanAllah. I didn't think of it this way. So who made this tafsir? The Salaf. So Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, he has given us the tafsir of Salah. And a Salah in the language itself, it means the Dua. So when the angels, they make Salah, so when the angels, they make Salah upon the creation, they are making Dua. You understand? They are making Dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 mentions them with the angels or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives their uh, uh, sins. So the salah from Allah to his creation is mentioning them to the angels. And from the angels upon the uh, uh, upon the ins and jinn and so on is asking Allah to do that or that uh, they are asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these uh, people. And our salah is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mention Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the angels. Imagine, ya ikhwa, sometimes, yani the ulama say, if the king of the, or the president or the king, he mentions your name, you're going to be happy. Then what about the king of kings, the sovereign, the creator of the heavens and the earth mentioning uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is a great honor. This is elevating the status of uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the angels, they are asking for that. Subhanallah. And then we have was salam. As salam, uh, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the safeguarding uh, uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from all evil. So let's understand first what these things mean before, uh, 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 before going to any conclusion or straying from the right path. And that is why, brothers, when a Muslim goes to the land of the disbelievers without ilm, without knowledge, in order to study, this compromises his deen, his manner, his honor, his family, his kids, his, his, his hereafter, and his dunya. So let's be very careful. And Al-Allama, Salih Al-Luhaydan, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said that he does not allow anybody to travel to the land of disbelievers for seeking ilm. None in his family and others. Uh, and of course, we know that the ulama say, unless it is a dire need, like the Muslims, they don't have anybody who is a brain surgeon, for example. So some people, they do this on behalf of the Muslims. So let's understand this very carefully. Okay, brothers. So now we know what sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means. <clears throat> Naam. And our brother, he says, this is what Sheikh bin Uthaymin has explained in his explanation in Al-Aqidah Al-Wasitiyah. Jazakallahu khairan. Naam. Um, <clears throat> there are uh, seven main battles. 
the Battle of Badr, of Uhud, of Al Khandaq, of Khaybar, the conquest of Mecca, Tabuk, and Hunayn. Uh, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, had seven children Al Qasim, Ibrahim, Abdullah, and he's also uh, known as Tayyib, Tahir, Zainab, Ruqayya, and Kulthum, Fatima, all of whom passed away during his lifetime, except Fatima, who passed away six months after his death. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Uh, then uh, his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's wives, uh, Khadija, Aisha, Sauda, Hafsa, Zainab al-Hilaliya, Um Salama Hind, Zainab bint Jahsh, Ju Juwayriya bint al-Harith, Safiya bint Huyay, uh, Um Habib al-Ramla, Rayhana bin Zayd, and Maymuna bint al-Harith. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Amen. Uh, his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is The khasa'is of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are not like ours. The things which apply to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are not like ours. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded to make qiyam al-layl mandatory upon him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in battles, he's, it is mandatory upon him to stay <clears throat> firm and not run away. This is mandatory upon him, not mandatory upon us. You understand? The Prophet ﷺ went in Isra and Mi'raj. The Prophet ﷺ, it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, divine revelation. None of us has these things. None of us, uh, 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 these descriptions apply to. So the, the same thing with wives. The same thing with wives. The Prophet ﷺ, he could marry people off, even without their wali. So he, could, he would be the wali of the woman. And these are from the khasa'is. These are from the special attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, these are specific things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So don't let the shaitan uh, uh, bring suspicious matters to you. So these are specific to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as qiyamul layl is specific to him and is mandatory upon him. Just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cannot flee from uh, battle, just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and on, and what we have mentioned, you understand? So all of these things. So keep in mind when a person comes and says, "Why so many wives?" and he's only thinking about wives. We say, "Why did you? Why didn't you ask about qiyam uh, al-layl? Uh, why didn't you ask about uh, 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 not, uh, you know, making qiyam? The, the 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 what do you call it in English? Uh, um, you know, pray praying and and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala at night. Why didn't you ask about that? You see." This is the shaitan manipulating people. We all know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has things which are specific to him, like the risala, like the message, uh, uh, like many other things that I have just mentioned uh, 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 earlier on. Uh, his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his wet nurses, uh, his mother Amina bint Wah, uh, Thuwayba, Halima bint Abi Thuwayb, as Saadiya. May Allah be pleased with her. Uh, the first verses revealed to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying in Surah Al-Alaq, recite in the name of your Lord who created, created people from a clinging substance. Recite and your Lord is the most generous who taught by the pen, taught people that which they did not know. Now in this ayah, Alaq, is a leech-like substance, something that clings, because a leech, when it, cl it, it clings and absorbs its sustenance. Some of the ulama, even of embryology, uh, they entered Islam because of this in Saudi Arabia in the 70s and 80s and 90s and so on, because they said that this is impossible to have been known at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even before the creation of microscopes. Because nowadays you see even pictures of the embryo at this level, at this stage, that looks like a leech. And with and not any microscope, by the way, uh, with the electronic microscope. So when they you have the very, like, um, when you see the diagrams and it's showing you this part and this part and that part, 
So th uh, these images are available, by the way, online, and you could um, easily see see them on Google. So this is one of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. The first uh, who believed in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the men, it was and Abu Bakr. When, when, the, when our dear uh, 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 brother, he reads, when uh, our dear brother reads, and he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say that as well. Say it. Don't be stingy. Say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the men, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, uh, from the women, the, uh, the mother of the believers, Khadija bin Khuwaylid, uh, from the children, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, from the servants, uh, Zayd ibn Haritha, from the slaves, Zayd ibn, Zayd ibn Haritha. Haritha, from the slaves, uh, Bilal ibn Abi Raba. Uh, there is no Abi Rabah, there is Bilal ibn Rabah. Nam. Okay. Uh, his وسلم's Hajj and Umrah. Uh, he وسلم, made Umrah four times, all of them in Dhul Qada. Dhul Qada, Nam. Dhul Qada. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam made only one hajj which is called the farewell hajj in the 10th year of hijrah. Naam, hajjatul wada'. Naam. His sallallahu alayhi wasallam's manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam surely you have great manners. The mother of the believers Aisha radhiyallahu anha has said his manners were the Quran. The importance of studying uh, the Prophet Sallallahu biography. Ibn al-Qayyim Rahimahullah said, if the happiness of a person in both lives is connected to the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu then it is a must for everyone who advises themselves and loves to succeed and be happy to know from his guidance, biography and affairs enough so not to be considered ignorant of him and to be considered from his followers and his group. People vary in this. Someone who knows a little, a lot, or someone completely prevented. Blessings are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives whomever he wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of great virtues. Now, start the third lesson. Now. Okay. Um, so now it's uh, the Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, right? When it says the Ahsan. pillars of Iman. Okay. The, the pillars, uh, so Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, says the pillars of Iman. Its pillars are six. That you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day, and that you believe in Al-Qadr, divine pre-decree. The good of it and the bad of it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Sarhan Hafizullah says the explains the Islamic definition of iman. Islamic yeah, memorize this. Memorize this. You should know this by heart. Naam. Islamically, iman is the statement of the tongue, belief in the heart and actions of the limbs. It increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and decreases with disobedience. Naam. And the same thing with uh, uh, the same thing with the shahada. Naam. The proof for the statement of the tongue is the hadith uh, where it says the highest of them, Iman, is saying La ilaha illallah. The proof for actions of the limbs is and the lowest of them, Iman, is moving a harmful object from the road. The proof for belief in the heart is and modesty is a branch from Iman in uh, Sahih Muslim. And the proof for uh, the Iman increasing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, which of you has had his faith increased by it? In Surah yeah, Because Na this is a very known hadith, which is the hadith of Shu'ab al-Iman. Can somebody post uh, the hadith? Uh, Ja'far or Abdul Hakim, 
may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Can you uh, post it? Hadith Shu'ab al-Iman. It is a very known hadith that Iman is uh, something and 70, bid'un wa sab'una, shu'bah, branches, branches. So let's read the hadith since the Sheikh mentioned it. So the Sheikh mentioned it, but he didn't put the hadith. Uh, uh, he just mentioned like parts of it. So let's put the hadith so that we read what he's talking about. Alaikum <laughs> salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are you on it, guys, or should I? Or maybe they are busy. Let me go to sunnah.com. Bismillah. So that we have a proper translation better than immediate translation. Uh, they sent it. They sent it. They sent it. Okay, good. Naam. Barakallah fikum. Let's see. Naam. The Messenger وسلم, said there are over 70 branches, branches of faith. Hmm. The highest. Huh? What does the highest mean? It means there is a lowest, right? Hmm. Are you with me, brothers? No one is answering. The highest means what? There is a lowest, right? Yeah. And the highest is better than the lowest, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Iman, belief, increases and decreases. There you go. And this is the Dalil. This is the Dalil. So if somebody comes and says it doesn't increase or decrease, we say you have said the exact opposite of what the Messenger وسلم, said, because he said there are over 70 branch, uh, branches of faith. Hmm? The highest is to bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger. And the lowest is the removal of harm from the road, yani from people's way. And modesty or shyness is also of faith. Modesty or shyness is also of faith. So this is the hadith. Naam, and this hadith is where? This hadith? It's in Bukhari. Uh, without Muslim, huh? Only in Bukhari? Uh, uh, Jafar says that it's in Bukhari and Muslim. It's Bukhari Muslim. and Muslim. طيب. Bukhari and Muslim. Naam. So in Bukhari and Muslim. So if somebody comes and says, no, 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 no. Iman doesn't increase or decrease. This is why I say, brothers, sometimes we hear some people, they make claims. They boast. I'm a follower of uh, the Prophet. We are the followers of the Salaf. We are the people of Sunnah. And they give their names and they give themselves many names. Subhanallah. And that's what we say. We say, subhanAllah, you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're going to say, I am part of this sect or that. You say, I am Sufi. I am, I don't know, Maturidi. I am Kullabi. I am, I don't know what. I am this. I am that. Is this what you're going to say? And where did it come? Like, what is this? So, subhanAllah, even when somebody comes and says, I am Ash'ari. Why? Because he's following an Imam al-Ash'ari. Before the Imam al-Ash'ari was even born, were people in misguidance? Ya akhi, where are the uqul? Where are the brains? Where is the where are where is their reason? Allah al Musta'an. Allah al Musta'an. So they and they will claim these claims, all of them. They will say, We are the people of Sunnah. We are the followers. We are the so and so. And then one will come. Sometimes you're going to hear some people say, Iman is a constant thing. And they start bringing philosophies and logical arguments and so on. What do the people of Sunnah say? They say, Stop, stop. All this nonsense that you are bringing, we have no stake in it. We follow the Messenger Sallallahu The Messenger Sallallahu said there are 70 branches, the highest and the lowest, meaning there is a lowest, there is a highest. It increases, it decreases. End of the discussion. All this logic and all of this reason, if it was valid, then why would Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala send the messengers? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the messengers? If we can know the deen and the duties uh, and the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us just with logic and reason, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the messengers? Okay, uh, yeah, ikhwa. So, their answer instantly turns into another subject. They say, so shall we cancel our brains? No, you shouldn't cancel your brain. Nobody said that. But your brain can never tell me how many prayers are mandatory upon me per day. 
your brain can never tell me is dhuhr four rak'ahs or two rak'ahs or five rak'ahs or you understand we need a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the message, to give us the duties and the rights upon us. So when that message and that messenger tells me that there are branches of Iman and that faith increases and decreases because the highest is so and so and the lowest is so and so and Allah in the Quran says, Zadathum imana, increase them in faith. Then khalas, I take this logic and brain and whatever the shaitan is telling you and I throw it in the garbage. There is no need for that because there is no room and place for that. My reason and everything that Allah subhanahu has given me is for me to understand this revelation, not to make up religion as I go, not to contradict the revelation itself and then say that this is right and the, re the revelation is, is wrong or say that there are... Uh, um, that we don't accept this hadith or that hadith. If we don't accept the hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim, the highest form, the highest form of authenticity. Because brothers, if you want to say what are the most authentic, huh? the top notch, the most authentic, the highest degree when it comes to authenticity. In the hadiths, all the people of knowledge are going to tell you that which Bukhari and Muslim agreed upon. So if we come and say, because of my logic and based on this type of reasoning, then uh, uh, this type of reasoning, then we uh, uh, won't accept this hadith. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Then if this hadith is not accepted, we can disregard every other hadith. You understand, brothers? If the highest form of authenticity is not acceptable for you because your brains say so, then there is no need for any hadith. We can manipulate the hadith as long as we go. And even if you give them the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who increased them in faith? Huh? Which of you increased it? They would say, no, no, no. It means something else. Again, not even the Quran is acceptable for them. It is their brains which is uh, acceptable for them and only their brains. And that is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has uh, written the book, Dar Ta'aruz Al-Aql wa Naql, which is a book about this subject. That he is refuting that there would be any contradiction between the brain and the textual facts. So these people and the textual, I mean evidence, the Quran and the Sunnah. So these people, they say they are the people of Sunnah and they are the followers. Yet when you bring them this, they won't follow. They will start doing these things. We say, Ya Akhi, your brain is your logic and reasoning. Other people's reasoning could be sound as well. And we have billions of people. So we have billions of reasonings. If we're going to follow a reason, we will be lost. Wallahi, brothers, we won't even be able to count how many sets of logic and reasons are there in the world. How many people died from the Muslims and how many people are living now and how many Muslims that will live tomorrow. Nobody knows. We can't even count them. If there are more than a billion, almost two billion Muslims, which reasoning shall we count on? Shall we count on? This is a lost cause. When we say religion is reason, this is a lost cause. It's done. Reason is gone out the window. That is why it is set in stone. What do we follow? The Quran and the Sunnah. That's it. No billion reasonings. Not the Islam of this brain or that brain and so it is not about you making up some philosophical statement that might be appealing to some people. Some people might think it's ridiculous. Some people might think that this is idiocy. And by the way, brothers, I have studied philosophy. And this is the conclusion I came with. I have studied the philosophy of many people, not because I wanted to. And before I started seeking ilm anyway, so don't think that I actually, I, the conclusion that I reached is that this is rubbish and garbage and I will never look at it again. But I have studied philosophy that, that from the time of Plato and Socrates and Aristotle moving all the way to postmodernism of Stanley Fish and so on and, and all of these uh, uh, ex isms, existentialism and deconstructionism and so It is nonsense in the end. It's rubbish is what I say. <clears throat> so if it sounded beautiful for somebody, it will sound rubbish to somebody else. And if you ask who, I will say, I, huh, I am one of the people that tells you this is rubbish. I don't need this. You understand? So 
So now because something sounds beautiful, we have to follow it and make it the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is subjective in the end. It might sound beautiful to you, to somebody else like me, it will sound absolutely repugnant and I would never waste a second in studying it. You understand? <clears throat> Unless, you know, if, if somebody wants to show how uh, 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 yeah, any mistaken, it shows the faults and mistakes of this. You understand, brothers? So, so we have to understand that nobody's saying that the aql, that the brain and reasoning should be cancelled. No, but there are things which the brain is useless when it comes to it. There are things, the reason has nothing to do with them, like which month shall we fast? This has to come from Allah. The, 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 how should we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This should come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. He's going to tell us how we worship him. We don't start making up stuff and say this is the deen. And this exactly is bid'ah. Making up stuff and saying it is religion, this is bid'ah. And if I'm not mistaken, this has been mentioned by Al-Imam Al-Shatibi Rahimahullah Ta'ala fil I'tisam. If I'm not mistaken, this has been mentioned by Imam Shatibi in his book Al-I'tisam. So that has to be understood very carefully and and any person with a, 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 a with a brain can tell you that this is correct. So claims are not the thing which we judge things by. Everybody says I am a follower of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam I'm upon the sunnah. We bring the Quran and the sunnah. If they deviate from it, if they reject it, if they go against it, then we say akhi there you go. There you go. You can claim whatever you claim. But in truth, when we bring the sunnah, this is what happened. And wallahi, brothers, wallahi. You will only find the, the people, the people of sunnah and jama'ah, the people who follow the salaf, which people nowadays, they call them salafi instead of khalafi. You understand? They called them. They gave them that name, salafi. And sure, why not? Salafi meaning following the salaf. Of course, no problem. The ones we were ordered in the Quran to follow them. They are the only ones that follow. They are the only ones that follow. When you come to any people who deviated or sect of people of bid'ah and so on, at the juz'iyah, the issue in which they deviated, you bring them the evidence they will never follow. Illa man rahim Allah azza wa An exception of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his mercy to. You will see. When you bring them, you say, Allah, you say, if somebody comes to you and says, you cannot say, Ain Allah, where is Allah? You cannot say that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not inside the world, outside the world. He's not above the world, below the world, to the right, to the left, in any direction, anywhere. He is, you see, what is, what is the definition of this? He's not anywhere. He's not here, not there, not above, not above. What is this? This is nothing. You are defining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as nothing. He has no names, he has no attributes, he is not, he has no names, he has no attributes, he's not, what you are describing is nothing. And this is what the ulama say. This is what the, all the ulama say, Ibn al-Qayyim, Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Abd al-Aziz al-Rashid, the, the ulama that explain the aqeedah, al-Hamawiyya, al-Tadmuriyya, al-Wasitiyya, when you read, this is exactly what they say. You are worshipping a nothing then. No names, no attributes, no actions, no uh, uh, not above, not down, not right, not left, not no in, in any direction, not in any direction, not inside the world, not outside the world, not in what is this? What is this? Not, not, not. Now, where did you get this from? None of this is in the Quran or the Sunnah. Then, what is in the Quran and the Sunnah? Allah subhanahu wa taala is above the throne. What is in the Sunnah? Above the heavens and the earth. Who asked Ain Allah? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you're saying we are not allowed to ask Ain Allah? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih Muslim says, Where is Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He asks, He says, Where is Allah? And the slave girl, she says, meaning above the, the, the heavens. And he said, Set her free, for she is a believer. And then they come to you and say, no, 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 this is not allowed. Subhanallah, they know better than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, they are negating the Quran and the Sunnah and on and on with any person of bid'ah. 
any person of bid'ah. Somebody comes to you and says, Allah subhanahu, we cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty. You say, why? You say, because we are creation. We are humans. We are mighty as well. So Allah cannot be, be mighty. You cannot say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. You cannot say that because we have two hands. So subhanAllah, Allah said in the Quran, Bal yadahu mabsutatan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that his two hands are open. He said two hands. Yadahu, two hands. He said in the Quran, you're saying we cannot say that. So the easiest way of replying to these people who make this claim, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we cannot say he's almighty. We cannot say he is hearing or seeing. We cannot say that, say that he has hands or that he comes or that he on the day of judgment or that he is above his throne. He is and on and on and on. They say because we are the ones who get above our camels. We are the ones who have hands. We are the ones who hear and see. We say, okay, okay, fine. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exist? He's going to say, of course. You say, do you exist? He says, of course. You say, ah, oh, no, Allah cannot exist. Allah cannot exist. According to your logic, with, we seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this. We're calling it logic, even though it is illogic. This is idiocy. But we say, according to your reasoning. We don't want to say according to your idiocy. So we say, according to your uh, you know, reasoning, idiotic reasoning, that because we have two hands, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, shouldn't have two hands because he's not like us. We say, okay, we exist and he exists, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he shouldn't exist so that he doesn't become like us. And this is what we will study in Aqid al wasatiya and Hamawiyya and Tadmuriyya and Al-Qawa'id Al-Muthla and so on. This is what you will study. Say, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alive? Naam, he is al-hay. Say, are you alive? He says, yeah. We say, no, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not alive. According to you, according to your uh, false rules that you're putting. They say, no, 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 no. And it happened to me. A person said this to me. He said, no, 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 no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, but an existence which is befitting of him. And he's alive, a life which is perfect, befitting of him. We say, okay, akhi. And he hears with the hearing, which is perfect, uh, uh, that is befitting of him. And he has two hands, which are not like our hands, which are befitting of him. And the same thing. He comes, na'am. He's above the throne. Yes, how? It's befitting of him. We don't know how. He's the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot understand and realize the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's even above that. Our limited understanding. He says in the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we will never uh, 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 encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like yuhituna bihi ilma like our knowledge will never reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we will only understand the little brothers we will not be able to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully that could never happen so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is in the Quran I just mentioned to you so when we bring this to the people of Bid'ah will they follow? no 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 they will follow their priests this is how they treat them, like priests, wallahi. They are like the Christians, and the, because they, follow, they don't follow the book, they follow what the pastor says. The pastor says, drink alcohol. They see the pastor drinking alcohol, they will never go back to the Bible and see that alcohol is not allowed. You understand? Same thing, they are doing the same thing. They are not, so you can claim and say whatever you want to say, but they are empty claims and empty sayings. What is counted? is this firqa, this one party, the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ones who follow, you would ask them something, they say, where is the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah? Where is the evidence? You bring them the evidence, they say, khalas, we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. And these are, th this is the ummah which will be prevailing until the day of judgment. Just like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there will be a party which is prevailing until the end of, uh, of the, until the day of judgment, until the end of days. You will always find them, even if they are little, not many. You will always find them, and they will be always prevailing when it comes to hujja and when it comes to proof and reasoning and so on. So, if somebody is truly looking for the truth, this is the truth. Following the Quran and the Sunnah, but you contradict and clash with the Quran and the Sunnah and start bringing reasonings and theories and philosophies 
which you and some of them which they have taken from atheists and Christians and, and this has nothing to do with Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never commanded us to take philosophy and to bring import things into his religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he has completed the religion for us and perfected it and has accepted it and is pleased with it. It's done all in the past. All in the past, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. And I think uh, this will be uh, 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 the end of uh, the, the ayah. We haven't uh, mentioned the ayah, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the ayah is Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Wa Atmamtu Alaykum Ni'mati Wa Raditu Lakum Al-Islam Dina. So this is the ayah, which I, 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 I translated it just to, uh, uh, because we have taken more than an hour in the lesson. Naam, so, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, shadu la ilaha la anta, sakhiruka wa tubu ilayk.